So, while I'm at it, I'm going to do a quick test on my ER25 collet holder, which is my go-to collet holder. My fly cutter. Slitting saw. And this is an R8 to Morse taper free collet holder. Um, the run out on this is not going to be any different to um, what it was last time. Or I'd hope not, put it that way. So, do I check? I'll check that anyway. Let's prove a point. Let's start from the beginning. We we'll check the run out in there. So I'm just rotating the spindle with my finger. So there will be some slight deviation pressure at the pulley end, but it's negligible or should be. And we're moving 0 0.02 of a millimetre. And that's what it's deflecting anyway. Right, is that going to zero? That is going to zero. So we're getting just a needle's width under 0 0.002 millimetres. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Now this collet holder came with the milling machine and it was uh, presumably a Warco part as well. Because with all the gear it came in this set and this is a spare set that also came with it. I had two two sets of ER25s. Um, oh, to sell it really, I don't know why I'm keeping it, but that run out is pretty good as far as I'm concerned. So, let's put a collet in and check it. I've got here a carbide mill, brand new, and let's check it on that one. I might just clean this collet off a little bit first of all. Get, make sure there's nothing in there. It's all nice and clean. Now, as I have got no way of holding this belt tight, I've just done it up as tight as I can, holding the top pulley in my hand. But that's not going to be far off what I normally tighten it to. Obviously, normally I've got the friction of the belts and the motor on it, and I normally just get a whack half afterwards with me fist. Let's um, set this up. I want to get it close as I can and approximately in the middle. There we are. And I'm going to keep it off the coating. Now, question if this is a carbide tool bit, why has it got a coating on it? What's the coating? There we go, right. Again, what looks to me is I need a whips under two. Might have to put my glasses on. Yes, yeah, so according to that, it's gained about a needle's width, so it is point zero, yeah, point zero 
two now. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's turn it out, turn it 180 degrees. There we are, and we are running at exactly the same as that. Yep, 0 0.02 mil. So that collet holder and at least that collet are spot on as far as I'm concerned. They are pretty damn good. And to be fair, I've always been happy with this collet holder. Never had an issue with it. So, let's test something else. So, R8 to Morse Taper 3. I've got it up there as far as I can at the moment. And let's see what we've got. Okay. Oh, I think I've come off the needle. That's point zero five six seven point zero seven point zero seven five now let's come down as far as we can I don't know if it wasn't a lot So 0 0.03, so 0 0.05 to 0 0.03, so let's just check it against the outside, just to uh, see what happens there. So deflection on the top, on the outside, is minimal compared with the inside. Real minimal. It's a bit of the inside, wasn't quite as accurate. Which in my mind figures, because this probably would have been ground the same time as the R8 taper would have been ground, because they're both on the outside. So we're reading a deflection between the two machines. I mean we're getting what point one here was we Yeah point point zero one so the deflection between the two is different isn't it? Yes. Right. Right, brand new, Morse Taper Free, Cleveland brand. It's brand new this one, I haven't used it yet. So, this, I mean, it's a known brand, so it should. You know, so I haven't got a lot of room between my bed and the 
these drills, I can see why um, other people are putting extension on these mills. I can actually... Yeah, didn't think so. Right, so we're going to be measuring on the ground bit that's exposed here. Right, so we're getting 0 0.04, 0 .0, yeah, 0.04 millimetres. So I've got no idea of checking that down here really, other than going on the corner of the blade. Tell you what. Right, from the bottom of the Morse taper free adapter, we are about 15 centimetres, about 16, about six inches. Right, we have got A deflection of well that's point that's zero so that's point one There we go, we have got a plunction of 0.17. Yep. 0.17 of a millimetre. Best I can test it. Just put my slitting saw in and I don't know if you can make that out or not, but there's like a branding on there. I can't remember what brand it was. It could be anything. I didn't go for the cheapest one on eBay, that's for sure. But I didn't go for the most expensive one. But I did want one that's got variable height, so you've got different collars and spaces. And what have I got on there? I've got um, high speed steel blade. 100 by 1 but like pretty much every slitting saw I've ever seen on any machine on YouTube they seem to jump in and out and oscillate <laughs> I've yet to see a watch a YouTube video with a slitting saw and the saw run perfectly true no doubt there are machines that are doing it because you know it seems ridiculous but even Adam Booth's equipment and it, the k and I think it is, his large milling machine with a uh, vertical slitting saw arrangement he's had on it, still skips in and out of the blade, you can hear it junk, 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 junk. This one's no exception, does exactly the same thing. So before I take this off, because the only way of really measuring this is on the shaft itself, before I take this off, I'm just going to check on the blades. Now I'm going to turn it backwards because I don't really want to be cutting that, but um, let's have a look anyway. I think what I'll do is I'll read this back on film. And I can tell you what the deviation is. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's one there that's really low, it doesn't even touch. Yeah, there. That blade there, and in fact you can see it. Zoom you in. There's the blade there. And you can see how thin the edge is, it's been cleaned up. Right, anyway, let's take that blade off. Okay, so we have a bare shaft here, and obviously we have a little bit of a keyway slot, which is going to make a bit of a difference, but I think we'll test it right there. Point zero two. That's pretty good. So I'd say the deflection is in that bugger. And there we go. We can see what it's called now. So this is my setup for the fly cutter. Now there's obviously not a lot to measure on a fly cutter other than the end of the taper. And what are you actually measuring? Don't know really. Just doing it for the sake of it now. Not quite on zero actually either is it? What am I reading there? 0 0.2, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. But what's that mean? Absolutely bugger all at the end of the day. And would it matter if this was pissed? I don't know if it would. As long as this wasn't. That's the main feature, it wants to stay the same point here as it does here, here and here. So yeah, it wouldn't matter if it was pissed actually, wouldn't it? Right, here we go.